In this section, you will learn the proper technique for placing urinary catheters in male dogs and cats. Urinary catheterization is a useful procedure to perform when urethral patency needs to be maintained, when measuring urine output is important for patient treatment, and when a non-ambulating animal is difficult to keep from urinating on itself. Examples of situations where urinary catheterization would be particularly useful include following urethral surgery or procedures, kidney disease, and in paralyzed patients. Placement of the urethral catheter is also used to collect urine directly from the bladder for analysis or culture, or during contrast studies of the lower urinary tract. The following procedure will outline the steps necessary to properly place a urinary catheter. The following equipment should be prepared prior to beginning. First, a sterile urinary catheter should be selected. The catheter selection will vary depending on the patient. In cats, a size 3.5 to 5 French red rubber feeding tube or Tomcat polypropylene catheter is normally used. Large diameter catheters should not be used in cats because they are less compliant and there is a greater risk of knotting or bending. You will also want to avoid placing stiff catheters, such as the polypropylene catheter, for long periods of time. Using these catheters for extended periods can cause bladder wall trauma and or tearing of the bladder. Catheter selection for dogs will also vary depending on the breed and size. Small puppies and toy breeds will generally require a size 3.5 to 5 French red rubber feeding tube. Small breeds will generally use a size 5 to 8 French red rubber feeding tube and medium breeds an 8 to 12 French red rubber feeding tube. Large breed dogs will need a size 10 to 12 French red rubber feeding tube. If you are at all uncertain as to the proper catheter size and selection, you should consult with the attending veterinarian. Here are the other materials that will be necessary for this procedure. A sterile water-soluble lubricant such as KY jelly or lidocaine gel. A disinfectant solution. A square of 4x4 dry gauze. A pair of sterile gloves. 2 aught or 3 aught suture with cutting needles. A needle holder. Adhesive tape. Urine collection system. The urine collection system can be made from an empty fluid bag and administration set. A pair of hair clippers. Appropriate sized Elizabethan collar for the patient if the catheter is to remain. Depending on the patient's condition and disposition, a sedative may be necessary. The attending veterinarian will decide on the appropriate sedative for the patient. The relaxed or sedated patient should be placed on a treatment table or wet sink in a lateral recumbent position, as shown here. The hair around the prepucial opening will need to be carefully shaved. This provides for a cleaner environment for the catheter. You will want to wear gloves while disinfecting the prepuce and penis area with chlorhexidine scrub or another appropriate disinfecting agent. The assistant can then retract the prepuce, exposing the patient's penis, as shown here. The technician administering the catheter should wash his or her hands and then put on a pair of sterile gloves. Remember that the inside lining of the package containing the gloves is sterile. Maintaining its sterility will provide you with a sterile work surface. With sterile gloves, remove the urinary catheter from its package, being careful not to touch the outside of this package. Remember that only sterile surfaces should come in contact with the catheter. It should not be placed on the table or be touched by your assistant. Estimate the length from the patient's prepuce to pelvic inlet and have your assistant mark the catheter at the estimated distance using a sharpie or piece of tape. If the catheter is not inserted far enough, it will not produce adequate drainage of the bladder. If it is placed too far, it is likely to kink or create damage to the bladder wall. This radiograph illustrates a proper urinary catheter placement in a dog. After you have determined the measured length from the prepuce to the pelvic inlet, you should carefully lubricate the first few inches of the catheter with sterile KY or lidocaine gel. You may use the package from the gloves as a sterile surface to work on. Gently insert the urinary catheter into the urethral opening until the predetermined length has been reached. You should notice urine flow when the desired length has been achieved. If urine flow is not observed, then flush 5 to 12 milliliters sterile saline into the catheter and observe for urine flow. If urine flow has still not occurred, then advance the catheter 1 to 2 centimeters and repeat the sterile saline flush. 
Once urine flow has been established, the catheter should be advanced an additional one to two centimeters into the bladder. Hold the catheter firmly in place so that it does not lose its position. Adhesive tape should now be applied in a butterfly fashion to the catheter at the prepuce entry site as demonstrated here. Secure the tape to the prepuce with two simple interrupted sutures. After the catheter is secured in place, the end should be attached to the urine collection system and observe for continuous flow of urine. This will require that the collection bag be kept at a level lower than the patient to allow urine to flow with the gravity and to prevent backflow of urine into the bladder. Be careful to ensure that all connections are tightly.